Well, joining me now for further discussion on the World Malaria Day is a public health physician, Olan Lesi Osadiaye. Thank you for joining us on TVC News at 7. The staggering statistics from the WHO about Nigeria and three other countries accounting for over half uh, the statistics of malaria cases and deaths uh, between 2020 and 2021. What is responsible for this? Okay, thank you very much for having me. Yes, Nigeria is one of the four countries contributing to about 50% of the cases of malaria in the African region. And um, definitely we can say one of the major causes is environmental factors. Number one, um, our environment is not the cleanest. We need to do a lot in terms of that to make sure that um, we clear up all the breeding places. Malaria is a disease that has been with us for a while and we are yet to find a solution, principally because um, our environment is not very clean. So if we're able to clean up the environment, clean up our gutters, let water pass very smoothly and easily, then we have less breeding places for malaria. As um, in a lot of country, um, cities like Lagos, where we have a lot of slums and um, areas where you have perfect breeding spots for um, the plasmodia, the ma malaria, then, you know, we are... Uh, do you, oh, we, we would always have a lot of malaria all around us, principally mm. because of that. Mm. And, and other things are because, okay, go ahead. Okay, please go ahead. Oh, I was going to say other things are because sometimes, you know, we, we tend to, everything is malaria. A lot of times, and, you know, people come and go to the hospital. Before they even go to the hospital, they'll say, I have malaria. How do you know you have malaria? Did you do any tests? Did you do any of those sort of things? No, you did not, but you just assume you have malaria. So sometimes proper testing will help proper diagnosis, and then we can actually properly treat. And this would also help to actually reduce the incidence of the cases of malaria. So that would also speak to the issue of self-medication. You have people who come up with some symptoms and just as you said, they assume it's malaria and they go ahead to self-medicate. So how do we get to that point of ensuring that people can boldly walk into our health facilities and get the needed diagnosis and of course treatment? Okay, so um, for some health centers in Lagos, I can speak from Lagos, time to time, I know that they actually run free malaria, um, rapid diagnostic tests for malaria. Um, I think the RDT test for malaria is one of the cheapest tests you can actually find because as malaria is really endemic in our country, it's actually been made to be as cheap as possible. So I feel that every... I think every private hospital, every government hospital is one way you can easily walk into and actually run an RDT test. And I know that some pharmacies actually sell um, self-diagnostic um, kits that people can actually use themselves to um, diagnose if they have malaria. But I would rather recommend, because they're expensive, that you actually walk into a primary health center, mm. do your RDT before you actually self-medicate. When you're sure you have malaria, then you can actually take the anti-malaria drugs. All right, so that's it on the part of the citizens. You mentioned earlier uh, the breathing places available for malaria. Talk about water bodies, stagnant water. And this is the rainy season where you have more yeah. of these uh, waters around. What would be your call to government and other stakeholders to face this whole uh, breathing spaces for, for the, uh, the vi virus now bacteria out? The parasite, actually. The parasite, okay. But, um, yeah um number one it's a collaborative thing it's not something that one person is going to do it's not one agency so you're talking about agencies across board yes the health sector has well, a role to play but then you know the environmental um officers and the environmental sector so has a huge role to play and it, it's it's making sure that everybody comes together with one goal when you have one goal and then you have um, the funding also push the funds into it because every these things also require money so with the funding and the proper education because um there are so many um tools at hand at hand to actually deal with malaria so we can actually go it's not only the environmental one we're talking about other things to have to be put in place so the environmental one it's a, it's a it's a multi-sectoral thing. Everybody comes together, make sure our markets are very clean. We are cleaning the markets. We are clearing our gutters. We are making sure that there's smooth flow of water. We are making sure that there's proper disposal of dirt of, of dirt and rubbish. And it's, you know, packed away. It's it's a it's really a multi-sectoral collaboration thing. And I think if we all work together with one single local, we can actually achieve um, a better malaria incidence. All right, so working together, everyone involved to ensure that we are able to have a malaria-free society. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Olanle Siosadia, a public health physician, for joining us on TVC News at 7. Thank you for having me.